Well, greetings, Pastor Eric from Zion Lutheran Church. And we're still in beautiful Redmond. Good to be together with you today on day nine. We're in chapter three. Remember last, yesterday, we looked just at that first verse up until that hyphen when Paul goes off on another thought. He begins chapter three. This is the reason that I am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. And then he goes, oh yeah, oh yeah, there's a squirrel over there. And he starts to follow this rabbit trail about for the sake of you Gentiles. And in the next section, through verse six, verses two through six is what we're gonna be talking about today. Have you ever had a closely held secret? A secret that no one knew except you. Have you ever, have you ever had a secret? Um, now, not you, but generally when people have secrets, it's about something that they didn't want people to know. It was kind of an incomprehensible thing that you had thought or done or whatever it is. It's a secret that you just don't want to don't want to get out. Well, Paul talks about a secret here which was there since the beginning of time, which a secret, which was a part of God's plan, a mystery that was according to God's mind from the beginning. Um, these verses two through six, I've never um, thought of it quite in this way, but let me read those verses to you. Paul goes on after the uh, new thought. Oh, there's a squirrel over there kind of thought. He says, for surely you've already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation. As I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind as it has been now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, that is, here's a mystery. The Gentiles have become four fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise of Christ Jesus through the gospel. That's the mystery, that's the secret. The secret is that the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, adopted sons and daughters, just like you are into the family of God, as fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, members of the same body, sharers in the promise of Christ Jesus through the gospel. That's the mystery, that's the secret. Now fascinating to think about kind of the, the, the implications of that or kind of the background of that. Um, we, we take it as just kind of self-evident. We take it for granted that Gentiles, we're Gentiles, um, that we're a part of the body of Christ. But to the Jewish Pharisee, which Paul was at that time, to the Jewish people at that time, that would have been considered impossible. That would have been, you know, how could God do that? We are the chosen people. What do you mean? They get the same place at the table. Um, remember how Jesus told of the workers in the vineyard and the last ones get the same pay as the first ones and the Pharisees and the Jews said, well, how can that be? I said, well, listen, you're still at the table. So there's more people at the table. So they got the same pay, even though they came in late. What are you griping about? Jesus says to the Pharisees at that time in that parable. Well, that's what Paul is saying here. He also says, you know, in verses two and three, you've heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me, the mystery made known through revelation. The mystery is not something to be solved by detectives. Um, it's not something that is like in a mystery novel. Um, in the ancient uh, world, Greco-Roman world, to which Paul was writing, a secret or mystery was something, a secret rite or a teaching that only the initiated, only the inside people could know. But Paul uses the mystery, the secret, in a different way here. 
as if it's the, un, the, the private counsel of God, which is hidden from human mystery, human reason or ingenuity. We can't figure it out on our own what God is doing, but rather it is a secret mystery that has been hidden through the ages that now is ready to be revealed. Remember that before Paul, it was only, they only had Jewish Christians, and it was through the ministry of Paul, after his conversion, um, that he wanted to go to the Gentiles, and Peter said, no, it's only to the Jewish Christians of those of us who have remained in Jerusalem. Paul says, no, it's to the Gentiles, and remember the whole council of, uh, of Jerusalem where they tried to figure out do Gentiles have the same seat at the table as the Jews do? Because the Jews have done a whole lot of things. They've been the promised people for a long time. They've gone through circumcision. They don't uh, eat meat. They don't eat bonbons and all that kind of stuff. Why should the Gentiles who do all those things, why should they be granted a same seat at the table? What Paul says, and this is what's fascinating, that was a part of God's plan from the beginning. So think, um, think of that. This revelation has been revealed by the Spirit to the recipients of the holy apostles and prophets, um, meaning that it's by revelation of God. It's by revelation of God by the Spirit that the Gentiles have the same seat at the table as the Jews do. Now. That's not something that can be figured out. In fact, Christianity, Christianity, the whole Christian faith and enterprise is not something that we could kind of figure out or piece together on our own. I mean, how, how could you kind of figure out to, if you were living in 10 BC? Okay, now, how is God gonna come and bring all people unto himself? Well, maybe Jesus, maybe miracles, maybe death, maybe... Re you couldn't figure it out. The revelation of the gospel is by the Spirit through the will and the work of God, through the holy apostles and prophets. Because what we have in the teaching and preaching of Jesus is through apostolic teaching. That is, the apostles, the early church, the disciples, they, they passed it on in this God-breathed scripture to reveal something to us that we never could have figured out on our own. We never could have constructed this, this storyline of this whole Jesus thing by ourselves. It was done by God, revealed to the apostles and prophets, and then revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. So the mystery, the secret that Paul is talking about here is that through the gospel, Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members of one body, sharers together in the gospel of Christ. That is, the Gentiles are equally the people of God, God's chosen people like the Jews. Now the Gentiles have come to that too. That might not be a revelation to you because we're living you know, 2,000 years past this. But this was a real eye-opener to the, to the people to whom Paul was writing. He was writing to Ephesus to mostly Gentiles, telling them, telling them. I mean, imagine this, the Gentiles living in Sin City, that um, when you believe in Jesus, you are grafted onto this body of Christ that you're equal partners in the whole gospel message of Jesus, that you don't have to take a second place seat, you don't have to sit in a back row, although for Lutherans, the back row is the chosen row. Of course, you know, you don't want to sit in the front row if you're Lutheran, but if you are Gentiles, you're a part of the family. You, you're a part of the family. That mystery, that divine revelation that Paul says was God's plan from the beginning, God chose Abraham, worked his way through and all that stuff. God thought, well, how can I reach everyone? Let's start with Abraham, let's start with the Jewish folks, and then with Jesus, let's break it open to everyone. God's methodology, that secret, that mystery that was revealed through the prophets and apostles 
preached by Paul to the pagan Gentiles, not, well, actually, they were believing Gentiles in a pagan world in Ephesus. Think of how they must have read that and gone, yay, they probably started a wave at the dinner table, you know, kind of going on, we are a part of God's family. Ain't nothing going to take that away from us because we're as much God's chosen people as God's chosen people of Jews that God had chosen from the beginning of time in order that... Jesus might come, be crucified, died, rise again, and the gospel of Jesus would be preached starting in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So that whole thing is, is such a massive word of encouragement from Paul to these Ephesians. You're a part of the family. I mean, you don't have to consider yourself second class because in the family of God, there's no second class. You're all children at the table. So that's just something to, to think about in those verses. It's, it's just kind of a groundbreaking thing that Paul wants to say to these Gentiles. You don't have to follow and go to the temple of Artemis and all that kind of stuff like your friends are. You have a place at the table. Just a wonderful word of encouragement. We're going to go on uh, a little bit more and then spend a day or two on the incredible prayer for the Ephesian believers at the, at, the, at the last part of chapter 3. But let's close this day in prayer. Gracious God, thanks for making us <laughs> children, adopted children into your family, sons and daughters of a loving, gracious God, planned by God from the beginning of time for us to be at the table. Thanks for these words of Paul. Thanks for the revelation, the mystery that you reveal to him that, that we are your children. We are your children. Thank you, Lord, for that. We just live in these difficult times with that encouragement that we are your children. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. You take care. Bye-bye.